Good evening, everyone. I understand that we are competing with a lot of beer that's being served right now upstairs, so I appreciate you guys being here today for... Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have said anything, should I? <laughs> they just didn't know. <laughs> Doors are locked, you can't get out now. Um, no, thank you so much for showing up here. Uh, my name is David Mills, and with me today is the venerable Alex Fodotyev, which That's is right. pretty good for me pronouncing a Russian name, I think. Um, and we are going to be presenting MGT310, which is Extending System Center Ops Manager with Avacode Application Monitoring. Um, and with that being said, uh, this is a, a brief look at the agenda. I'd like to, to talk quickly about uh, the acquisition, which I'm sure many of you heard of. Uh, Microsoft purchased Avacode this past month. It's now a wholly owned subsidiary of Microsoft. Um, and then we're going to go into the scenario of managing uh, complex applications and what Avacode's technology will help customers do in those situations. Then we are going to have also the venerable Gordon McKenna come up on stage, one of our good partners. Yeah, everybody cheer for Gordon. And uh, he's going to give us some stories about um, how the Avacode technology is being used uh, by partners to help customers and, and also part of a, of a thriving uh, partner business opportunity. So with that, why Avacode? Well, number one, it's a successful company. Uh, we wouldn't have purchased them if they were not. Um, they offer some of the top talent in .NET application monitoring, and they have a lot of domain experience in this area. Gartner has ranked them in their APM Magic Quadrant, that's Application Performance Monitoring, um, as a leader. Um, so some significant achievements in this space, and that's recognized by the analysts. There is existing integration with the System Center Ops Manager solution. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about that, and that's also the connection point for some good partner opportunity with that business. Um, and then also, there's the end user experience in applic application performance monitoring um, being very critical in virtual data centers and cloud environments going forward. Um, so really, if you think about this providing a 360 degree view of what's going on with your applications, and that will be regardless of whether that's in a physical data center or in the cloud, I think it's a very strategic acquisition to bring us forward to that model. So let's talk a little bit about managing complex applications. Um, today, especially, there's many points of failure as you watch the little red ball trying to squish through the, uh, the wire there. Um, and really, this brings up the point of trying to figure out where that point of failure is or if it's multiple points of failure. And how do you figure out if you have a problem? How are you going to be able to drill down into that? Um, and then how are you going to be able to fix that problem? So if you take a business like, um, I don't know, something like buntcakes.com that sells maybe 200 million euros a year of Bundt Cakes globally using their BundtCakes.com website, then you can imagine the revenue that's going to be lost if you can't immediately uh, drill down or find out about a problem in real time and get that fixed. It's just, uh, you know, it's a part of doing business. It has to be up and running, and you've got to have a real-time view of what's going on there. The other thing to think about is that there are a lot of different roles, and there's this horizontal integration that has to happen in a company to keep those applications up and running. There's a lot of different roles, and that is for lifecycle management and for being able to troubleshoot and keep those applications up and running. So it's a complex situation, not only from diagnosing the problem and figuring it out, but also coordinating that between roles in what you're doing with that application. So with both of those things in mind, um, really that's where Avacode comes in and gives you the capability to deal with both of those issues really effectively. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Alex to start drilling down into Avacode's solution and uh, talk about the value added here um, of Avacode with System Center. Excellent. Thank you, David. Yeah. Uh, when I'm thinking about the, what the, the key pieces that Avacode brought into the System Center monitoring, I do want to emphasize uh, mainly two key features. First of all is that uh, to start your application monitoring, you don't need to to modify the source code, to do any updates. So whatever DLLs you have in your environment, compiled in a release or debug mode, maybe those are provided by your vendor or even third-party components, you can start monitoring right away. You don't need to, to do any changes to your application. And th the second thing is uh, crucially important is the overhead. Because uh, when we do monitoring, we collect some, some information from the application, and that really consumes some resources. Uh, and that really what was worrying all our customers uh, previously. 
So we're talking about overhead uh, within three to five percent on top of your, your current application load. And that was uh, really important to all of our customers. Sometimes we were doing even exercises to prove that uh, online, like for Xbox uh, online. Uh, we did that uh, exercise to install 50% uh, of their servers. We installed with Avicode monitoring and enabled that in production and compared the, the overhead, the load, uh, the CPU usage, at all those kind of metrics on that 50% versus the 50% with no monitoring. And for them, uh, the overhead was not more than uh, than four percent, so that really proves that uh, you can just uh, run the monitoring, and that 's important when we 're talking about uh, the deployment uh, where we got pieces uh, land in the existing operations manager infrastructure, there are a few few places first of all. Uh, Obviously, you install the manage pack on the RMS, and with the manage pack, you also install the uh, additional web console, which extends uh, the standard capabilities. <coughs> like, let's consume that operations console is purely for the operations. So, you want your health of your ap applications, health of your servers, health of your services. You collect your metrics, see your alerts. And when we're talking about the application monitoring, some of the issues we want to bring to the RMS directly, so the operations can work on those scenarios, fix those issues. But is, uh, if, if the, the issue is really application related, like, like a failure in the code, we want to bring it to a separate console for development so they can do uh, additional analysis, additional troubleshooting. And that's why we brought our console in addition to the standard console to enable those scenarios. Then uh, each monitoring, uh, like each, each, each uh, application you want to monitor requires an agent uh, to be installed. So we use uh, operations manager agent and add uh, .NET monitoring modules on top of that. So for the machines uh, where you have operations ag manager agent, you have .NET operation uh, .NET monitoring modules on top of that enabled and configured, and they will start collecting the data into the operations manager. And then at the end, you consume the results uh, with the consoles, and it can be either Operations console, web console, or the uh, Avicode console, Avicode web console to, to see the results. When you start the application monitoring, uh, you start collecting various <coughs> metrics with, with our solution. And that starts with really high level things like uh, overall KPIs, including response time, rate of the violations <coughs> per second, rate of the exceptions per second. Then it goes uh, to the level of the health of your, your components. Like, is my application healthy overall? Uh, what's, the, what's the average response time? Does it violate any of, my, any of my SLAs? And after that, it goes as deep as the detailed uh, information regarding any, any failure, any performance issue uh, included with the alert diagnostic information. When we're looking at those alerts, uh, we analyzed the content of the alert and uh, the reason why the application fails, and we put those issues into different buckets. Uh, and those are buckets include security and connectivity. When I look on those issues, security and connectivity, this is really an uh, environmental problem. This is something that can be fixed right away with changing configuration, maybe assigning permissions. If your application fails because the password you're using to connect to the SQL storage is expired, or maybe the configuration is wrong, maybe just there is no wire connection to that SQL or to that web component, it's, it's quite easy to fix and you don't need to involve any, any dev resources for that. And we kind of uh, look on those issues as expected problems, and we collect specific details to enable you that visibility. But the, the other issues are application failures or performance problems related to the, uh, to the code itself, or maybe to dependencies like database, like web services, maybe some external files or something like that. And when that happens, you really need to, to be able to kind of work on that, and you cannot predict that those problems. Like, of, of course, you, you are coding to log some important stuff to the event log, maybe to the files, but you cannot predict everything that happens in the production. And what uh, our monitoring does, it tries to collect as much as possible uh, of any useful information that we see uh, during the point of failure and send the data to, to you so you will be able to diagnose the issue and enable the, the, kind of the fix for that. So. Uh, what I wanted to do, I wanted to jump into the demo machine, and uh, one, of the, one of the things I wanted to show you is that how easy it is to, to start monitoring. 
So here is the operations manager console, uh, and I already installed the, the .NET manager pack for, for that. And uh, as you see here on the left on top, we enabled uh, four additional wizards to, to start the monitoring uh, for your application based on the type, if it's web application, web service, executable, or Windows service. So what I'm gonna do, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll create a monitoring, I'll define monitoring for the application which I, which I created just two days ago for, to show you how easy it is to configure the monitoring. So I'm picking up the enterprise ASP.NET application since it's a web application. And uh, you should point here that uh, this wizard is application based. So we already pre-scanned your inventory. We already found all your endpoints that you have. And I can just select the, the one that I need. It's, this is my application. And since uh, every application can be distributed, uh, I can see on which computers this, is, uh, this application is installed. Like here is the computer list, and for me it's only one machine since it's running locally uh, on one virtual machine. So I'm selecting this application. Uh, then I'm, I leave everything by default, like the application name, description, discovery interval. And uh, the, really the, the, the main thing here uh, in the monitoring settings, you can set up your uh, monitoring criteria, and it starts with the SLA. That, uh, that is key feature for the performance monitoring. So every time the application uh, request runs slower than the alerting threshold, which is your SLA, we'll be generating a performance alert with the details of that performance violation. Then sensitivity uh, threshold contains the amount of data, how, how much you want to collect in that performance problem. Uh, after that, you configure the list of the performance counters. And uh, those are pretty much your, your application overall metrics. And they by default include uh, application response time, rate of the violations, rate of request per second. But you can extend that with a list of your own counters or any, any system counters. Uh, the last piece is basically uh, the type of the information you want to collect. Like you want to be able to uh, collect any connectivity and security issues because those are problems that you, you should be able to uh, handle in the operation cycle, right? And uh, we don't want you to be able to collect all application failures at this time because uh, there might be multiple exceptions like uh, catched exception which you handled in your application, maybe some business logic exception, and we don't want to uh, put all that amount into the operations manager so it's not going to be handled by the operations people because you want to handle that with the dev resources with your support team. And uh, you can define your monitors which will going to reflect the health of your application state. So I'll leave that uh, as is. I'll just change the period to be updated every one minute. So we don't need to wait another five minutes to, to see the results. And the second uh, part of the configuration includes the transactions definition. And transaction definition, uh, let me browse for the pages. Uh, transaction is, what you need to think about that, is a piece of the functionality that you have. It might be a web page, it might be a web service, it might be a method of your, in your DLL. And when you're adding that, uh, what you're saying to the, man, to the monitoring is that you need to track all kind of issues, possible failures, and I'm enabling the failures here. Uh, in, anything which you want to handle is going to be handled for that transaction to the operations manager. So, so you, you mean that if this uh, is a business critical functionality, you want to enable that to, to be visible to your operations team so they can support that right away if there is a failure. And I will update uh, the, the interval to be updated every minute as well. Uh, that's pretty much everything you need. Like if you have multiple pages, multiple web service, multiple business tr critical transactions, you can add that. So I'm creating the manage pack. And this is, uh, those are like five steps you need to enable your monitoring. And while it's saving that, let me tell you what's going to happen next. Once we created the manage pack with the settings for, for this application monitoring, it creates, uh, first of all, it creates dashboards uh, to view the application state. Second thing, it starts discovering all, on all your machines that you have in your environment, it starts discovering where this application is deployed. So, uh, like, each time we find that, we deploy the .NET monitoring modules on, on that machine, we install and configure that, and after that, we uh, alert you that you need to restart IES. So we, we require one uh, IES restart to enable monitoring, and you don't need to do it right now. You can schedule that for the after hours, like 
at midnight, maybe we want to take this machine out of the production load uh, or something like that. So that's pretty flexible. So you can set up the monitoring during the day and sh schedule your restart or recycle of the yes as a natural one or maybe just something overnight. And uh, while this is uh, finalizing that, uh, let me tell you one little story that I have with this monitoring enabled. One of the interesting issues and one of the interesting conversations we had with the developers d during the installation, and it, it happened in multiple accounts, and they've been telling that they already have a login uh, functionality, like we're already logging all, all our errors to the event log. And when we installed the monitoring, we enabled it to, to handle all issues, handled and unhandled. And the first thing they told me that there is the event log where they're logging the problems is empty, so everything is healthy and there are no worries, no, no, worries, no problems. Uh, and when we installed and started monitoring, uh, what we saw was that their login functionality actually was failing uh, because <laughs> this was really funny. It was trying to log the, something to the event log, but uh, the event log was not created or the account was not given the right permissions to do that. So it looked like it's healthy, but uh, the functionality to log that wasn't able to report that it was a problem during login because it's just weird design in this case. And the, the, the problem which I see here is that when you're designing the monitoring, the login stuff, it never goes to your QA cycle. You never test that. Like you just spend, I don't know, a day maybe here to, to add that log to, to event log or maybe to the file and that's it. And you never test that during the deployment, during the QA cycle. Uh, and that's one of the cases we also can, can capture. So that, that uh, has created my manage pack. And uh, while that is installing the .NET Beats and configuring the, the monitoring, I will show you a few examples and explain you how it works with the existing application. I haven't installed the dinner now. Uh, it's a sample from Microsoft of typical three-tier commerce application. So uh, when I already discovered that, enabled for monitoring, and when I did that, it already created the dashboards and one of the entry points to see the application state is a state summary view, which includes uh, basically three things. As I mentioned earlier, it includes uh, overall metrics of the application, like rate of the failures, response time, etc. Then it shows you the health of different components, including the overall application health and the transactions which you defined. And uh, when something is not healthy, like in this case, I'm not using an application, so it's healthy. When something is not healthy, we are collecting the alerts, those enable those details, like failures, security, connectivity issues. Let me show you uh, one of the failures. Uh, that's performance. Let me keep it uh, till the end. Yeah, like this one shows me that uh, there was a problem with the card page, or the now card page, and it failed with null reference exception which is really kind of issue you want to forward to the dev team. So when I go to the alert context, it shows me exactly what I need to know about the issue. So we collect, uh, let me just expand that and I will, I will bring it to the, to the screen. Uh, so what we do, we collect not only the information regarding the exception, like it's new reference exception, we do not connect just the stack, we collect the actual values of the runtime parameters passed through the stack. So what, what kind of the challenge you see when, when there is a problem? First challenge is that you need to detect the problem. You don't want to wait for the, for the time when the customer calls you and says, okay, I can use the site because it's not accessible, it's failing. So first thing, you want to detect it. But once you detected that, the next challenge, which is important, is to be able to, uh, to replicate the issue in your environment. And sometimes if it's a general problem, everything fails, it's easy to replicate. But then if that's a problem, that is related to the user context, maybe to the profile, maybe to the data that uh, he inputs there, that you need to know a bit more about what, is, what was happening there. And for that, we're collecting those parameters. And we can collect the parameter values uh, in both system layers, like system, in this case, system web UI page brought request. So we can see the username, the page, the you know, IP address, etc. And as well, we can collect uh, the information passed to your own methods. So you can see, in this case, uh, show order method was received this order object with those field, fields set up like red or something. So this is actual values passed to the method. And at the same moment, you can see the uh, member variables like that were initialized at that moment of failure. 
and the source code information, which includes the actual uh, line of code where exactly the exception was raised. How many of you are developers? Okay, so probably you will ask the question like, do I need PDB files or something like that? Uh, you don't need to deploy the PDB files. If you have PDB files on the server that you are monitoring, that's good, we'll just grab it from there. But if you're not allowed, like for some of the companies, it's just the policy that doesn't allow to deploy PDB files. If you're not allowed to do that, you can always upload, upload those PDB files to our management server after the issue has, hap has happened. Like it happened on Saturday, Today, well, on Thursday, we're analyzing the issue. You can upload PDB files to our server, and we'll link it up, and we'll show you the line number and the file name where exactly the issue was raised. So that's pretty much what you need to, to diagnose those uh, application failures. Another, another example uh, was I, I was talking about security connectivity problems. This is something that dev team doesn't, doesn't want to, to learn about, but the operations team needs to be fixing that right away. So this is a failure. Somebody cannot complete the request. It, it's the same exception. But what we do here, we see that this, is, uh, this problem is related to the security or connectivity aspect. And we collect specific information. Like in this case, you can see that there is a problem that some storage procedure didn't have enough execute, didn't have execute permission for that account. Do, what do you need to know about storage, like storage procedure failure with the SQL? You need to know the SQL name, database, like address, you need to know the storage procedure name, you need to know the connection string. In this case, it's, it uses integrated security, so you need to know the thread account, which your uh, application pool was configured to use, right? That, that's it. We, we're bringing that to you, so you can fix it right away, like, like a security or connectivity problem. And uh, the last example I wanted to show you uh, with, with those problems, what we're collecting, was the performance problem. And performance problem, uh, again, it's raised when the, uh, when the request exceeds the threshold. So something runs slower than SLA. And this is really hard to detect because you don't know what, what the user was doing. Maybe it's, it was some specific network or maybe it was some specific input uh, which made this transaction to run slow. And for those violations over the SLA, we, we collect, first of all, if you take a look at the top, we collect the uh, the page name with the duration. So on the left, you can see it was almost 20, 21 seconds for the search page to run. Uh, then we collect, uh, let me expand this as well. We collect the parameters passed to that page so we can see the, the username, the query string, uh, like the user agent, something that might be important. And then we collect what was happening underneath that. And that includes both uh, system stack, your own code with the methods of duration. Like in this case, I can see it was a SQL storage pro called almost five seconds. Some methods which were actually called in WCF and another WCF call. So from, from my point of view, we spent a lot of time some, somewhere out of this component. And what you, need, what you probably want to know, what was WCF doing at that moment? Why it's running slow? And for that, uh, we always include do you remember the web console, the Avicode web console, which unweaves some troubleshooting uh, scenarios? We include the link to, the to that console so we can open that uh, always, and uh, that will open the same event, but uh, in our console we have much more capabilities for the troubleshooting, so developers <coughs> are typically sitting there and even operations are using that right away. So this is the same event. What I want to do, I want to click distribute chains. And this will show me how the transaction was executed across different layers. So it starts in the browser, goes to this front end, and does the two WCF calls. Of course, to see that picture, you need to have our monitor enabled for those WCF components. But if they're running even on a different machine, that's fine for us. Just enable the monitoring. We'll correlate that stuff together, and you'll see the chain. And the cool, cool thing here that you can drill into that and see exactly why, what was happening in WCF. Like, let me... Let me zoom this in. So you can see that WCF was running slow due to, uh, to some SQL. Uh, don't show this. Uh, yeah, like this. Can everybody see that? So that's, that's it. My end user was experiencing performance issue, 20 seconds for search. And we, we, now we got as down as the database calls. So we know those calls like across the layers. And we need to fix that, forward that information to the DBA and he can do something with that. Uh, going back to what I was doing. 
uh, I was discovering my application. Let's see uh, how that, that did. Uh, here. I can see that uh, the monitoring has actually created the dashboard for my application. So there is a folder, like a typical manage pack, which was automatically created, which contains multiple dashboards. And one of the entry points, as I mentioned, is a state summary. So you can see here, let's check. It should, it should have discovered that already, yeah. It discovered the application is currently healthy. It runs on my uh, local machine, demo one. And uh, when you first start your application monitoring, I mentioned you need to do IS restart. So let's go to the monitoring agent state, which is a uh, .NET application monitoring agent, uh, which controls the health of that. So we can see the warning here, uh, which tells that, let me, see, let me check that. It should tell that I need to restart or recycle the IS, something like that. So let's wait for that. I will recycle the IS and just try to use my application. Uh, come on. Yeah, here it is. So I need to recycle the IES. That's pretty easy. Uh, let, let me do that. Uh, so we have, uh, we even have a specific task to do that right from here. So you don't need to remotely go to your IES or something like that. Uh, we'll just do recycle. And I'll, then I'll bring my application and we'll check what can be collected right here. Okay, success, excellent. So I'm bringing my application. It's pretty cool. I created that just on Tuesday and I spent my, my 10 minutes on doing that. You, you will like it. But that's a calculator. That, it, it does division only. That's a pretty tuned calculator. Let's, let's check, check this out. I've been looking for a calculator that does division only. Excellent. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you the source code. To divide my bunk cakes with. Exactly. <laughs> Share with my friends. So the, the startup will take a little bit. Sorry? Ah, really? I didn't know. That's, thank you. So that's my calculator. You can see it's Alex's calculator. Let me divide something like 100 by, uh, by 10 to prove that it works. It shows 10. Ooh. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Let's nice. do like. I guess you know what I want to do. I want to divide it by zero. <coughs> and when I do that, that's division by zero exception. That's a problem. Maybe that's, I hope that's not a problem that you see in your applications in production. But anyway, uh, that's an issue. Maybe you see much better screen than this one when application failure happens. But again, how, how would you know that something has happened? I would see it here. Let's wait until uh, the refresh comes in. We are refreshing every minute. I set it up that way. So I'm looking for the alert. Okay, here's my alert. And let's go inside that. Alert context. Uh, let me check it out. Go into the stack. That's my zero exception. And I can see exactly the, fail, the point of failure. It's my, my do math method. And I can see the values of parameters passed there. That's it. Very easy. We spent like. <laughs> Thank you. So we spent like 15 minutes doing that exercise to, to start monitoring and to get the data. Did they know? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I'm trans transferring the, the screen to both, to both rooms. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. So that's, that's it. It was, it was easy, like a bun cake. Let me go back to the presentation. Uh, what's next? Do you see that? Excellent. Next step is what we did uh, quite recent, like two years ago. We added the monitoring to be extended to collect the, the, the problems from the end users. Like if you have the web application which uh, runs in a browser uh, and somebody is using that, what we saw talking to our customers that uh, some of the issues may happen on the end user, like JavaScript failures, Ajax failures, maybe slow calls, maybe the page runs slow due to like many images or many CSS files, or just it, it's, the HTML is too complicated. So the server side works perfectly within the SLA, but then for the end user, it runs like uh, 20 seconds to load the page. And that was actually really the good case for us, and we extended our monitoring to capture that. And I don't want to go through those bullets. 
uh, I want to tell you this. We, we followed the same requirements we had for our monitoring for the server side. So first of all, you don't need to do anything with your source code. So you don't need to do anything. And you don't need to install anything for the end users like you know, custom objects, Internet Explorer plugins. Everything is happening right away. What we did, we, uh, we enabled the monitoring using just purely JavaScript and browser abilities to collect this information from the end users. And the second concern, if you remember, was the overhead. So we don't need to, to slow down the end users by the monitoring. So we did that as well. And for the, for the client side monitoring, the overhead is, is within the same range. So we are not going to slow down your applications uh, for the end users as well. And uh, let me actually go back to, to the demo and uh, show you how, how that looks like. And uh, as well, together with that, I want to show you uh, our console I was talking about. It has its own UI. It's uh, Avicode Intercept AC Viewer. Uh, I guess we'll be renaming that during the integration with Operations Manager. But let, let me call it AC Viewer for, for last time. Uh, let me do this. Since it's <coughs> created for more like troubleshooting cases, uh, it, it can do more grouping stuff, correlating, uh, seeing different values. Let me actually find my page. It was same search transaction. I'm talking about same search transaction. And over here, I'm looking for uh, problems collected from that. So we can see this uh, rough number of performance violations uh, from the search. In, if I look on the column which says source, sometimes it has just the application name dinner now, sometimes uh, dinner now with the suffix client which means uh, this data came from the end user and uh, this, is, this was happening on the browser. And that's what I want to show you. Uh, let me load this up. Yep, cool. Uh, let's see. Page, uh, search page, uh, it was running 22, even more than 22 seconds for the end user. And uh, first of all, we detected that. Then you need to know why it was running that slow, right? And for that, we bring the breakdown for the timing uh, way, way it was running. So we didn't spend much time on the network since I'm running locally. Uh, I can see 93% spent on the server side. It's a little, a little bit over than 20 seconds, right? Where are uh, the rest two seconds? Uh, some time was uh, like half a second was spent in DOM loading, which is document object model loading. If you have complex HTML, very complicated data grid, something like that, it will go there. Uh, zero time for the window load JavaScript and uh, almost a second for the peripheral loading. So I was downloading something from the network, uh, something that takes time. And just let's, let's check what that is. And uh, here I can see my breakdown of the content and I can see that uh, we downloaded almost two megabytes of the images. Let's, let's, let's go check that, uh, why, what was there. And we have multiple like, areas where you can uh, see detailed information. Since uh, this was, let's check, it was not CSS files, those are small images what were two, two megabytes. Let's go to see those images. So we can see here uh, that, uh, let me take this off. Yeah, here's my images information, right? I can see the size and on the right I can see the timing. So the right, right uh, column says loading time almost a second for the last image. If I go back, that's the logo size maker PNG. I definitely, if I want to fix that, and that goes to every end user, I want to make it a GIF, for instance, or something different, which is less than two megabytes. That's it. That's what you need to know. If uh, the problem was related to the, to the server side execution, like in this case, you can use same, same capabilities and go to distributed chains, and you will see that this is the same transaction. Now it starts with the end user, goes to the server side, then drills into WCF. That's pretty much what you need. Another thing I uh, forgot to show you, which is uh, pretty, pretty useful sometimes, uh, like let me drill down back to the search transaction on the server, uh, and let me ask you this. Like how, how often like, did you argue with, like, between developers and uh, operations that this was not a code issue, it was like not enough CPU problem, or maybe you didn't have enough memory on, on, on on the machine. Did anybody do that, those, <laughs> those conversations? No, yeah, yeah, it's, it's always obvious whose problem that is, right? So what we did, uh, we brought, uh, with every problem, we, we brought uh, the information about the 
state of the server at the moment of failure, which includes uh, various performance counters prior to the moment when the failure has happened. So the, the, the point on the right where I have my mouse on, that's exactly when the violation has happened. So you can see what was happening before that 15 minutes before the failure, uh, and you can see the CPU information, memory, load information, I don't know, .NET memory state, uh, anything else, and you can even extend that with your own counter, so something that you think is valuable for that troubleshooting. So we didn't want those conversations to happen too frequent. We kind of included that to every problem report. And here I can see that, uh, which is red. Red is my uh, CPU time. So it started like five minutes ago, before the failure, I mean, not ago. But CPU became stable by that moment. It was almost zero, and the memory was very stable. So I can definitely t tell you that this is something in the code, not in the machine. But there have been issues like different, like CPU was running high, and that was a root cause for the problem. So we kind of enabled that. Thank you. Very nice. Yeah, I kind of did that. Uh, and the last piece, I'm kind of showing that very, very fast screens. Uh, what would I plan to, to be available at the booth tomorrow? If you have any questions, just find me out there. I'll be able to show you more and to answer your questions. And the, the last piece, uh, we enabled for, for the monitoring is the, mo is the reporting. Like, let's imagine that you install this in your production. Like, even if, if you have one server, how many problems you will see there? It might be tons of problems, different issues. And what you need to know, you need to know where to start working with them. Like, let's say you have even 100 issues. Do you have 100 developers to fix it? Like, give, give issue to the developer? No, you probably don't. And you need to know what, is, what, what problems bring your application kind of more uh, down or what's performing worse. So you need to start looking on the overall state of your environment, uh, ch challenging that, uh, checking if that, uh, that metric goes off the baseline, if it's a regular rate of the issues, if that's the same response time as you've had like for the last three months, et cetera. And for that, we enabled the, the advisor which brings you those reports, and you can run those reports from both our console and as well as the operations console from the reports uh, tab. So you can run those reports, subscribe to them, like let's say, uh, you're responsible for the application. You can subscribe to reports each Monday. You come to work and you have your status for the previous week uh, for the application to know what kind of new issues you experience, experienced, what was your response time, etc. And you can address that right away. You can forward that to your dev team, etc. Let me. Uh, does it say? Yeah, it does say. I need to demo that. So really great tools for uh, doing prioritization of the problems, to make your point, I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I have the report exported already, so we don't need to wait until it uh, loads up. Uh, let, me, let me show you that. And probably you might have seen this kind of report, but that's one of my favorite reports. When I was working with the customer installations, I typically start with this and a few more just to know what is happening in the environment for me and for, 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 for the management who was looking at that. It was really valuable. Like in this case, it shows you the chart uh, which brings all your applications in the environment uh, sorted uh, descending by the rate of the issues. So you can see which application experienced more problems. So uh, here, is it the pointer? Yeah, excellent. So here you see application number one, it has more issues than any, anything else, and uh, these are mainly connectivity, some of them are performance, and some of them are failures. So a lot of connectivity issues here in application number one. Application number two, Juggle Questionary, has mainly security issues. And you can see that uh, first three applications together, uh, they uh, represent 90% of all problems in the environment. So if you fix all problems over there, you will improve your availability of your software by 90%. Okay, next, next step, you need to know what exactly you need to fix. And just staying within the same report, but uh, going with a little bit further details, uh, let me do this thing to make it better. Is it okay for, the, for everybody? Everybody can see that? Uh, so, like, that's my number one application, which has more failures. At this level, what I need to know what kind of functionality, like let's imagine I'm a high manager. 
I really want to know where do I need to put my resources, I'm implication or I need to ask somebody to fix part of the functionality right now to improve that. So in this, in this case, I need to know why it's running slow. And uh, what we did, we group all the problems by the resources. And the resources might be external components, like in this case, it was a database running slow. And you can see that uh, there is 31% of the issues associated with the database. And that's column number two. Uh, and by tracing the color, I can see it's connectivity once again. So that's very easy. Uh, and I, I can even click right here, uh, go to those connectivity problems, check out all the events, those, those were happening in that uh, application regarding the problems with the connectivity of the database and get into the details of that. Ah, it's not refreshing, right? Uh, so that's the list. Uh, it's ugly scale. It looks much better when you do 100% scale. So I can drill into the event and see the same details, like why exactly it was failing, but how we got here. We know that this is most critical applications. This is the second failing resource, and I need to fix this issue. This is connectivity to the database connection string. For those of you who do worry about the security, like I don't want to expose private data, like passwords, social security numbers. We automatically cut off uh, the passwords, like password or PWD values, and you can extend that by your own application kind of uh, details if you have uh, social security, something else, uh, the card great card number, you can configure that to, to, to strip that out of the monitoring results. So you can get access to those details, but really having them prioritized correctly. And uh, if, uh, going back to the report, if you experience the problem because of the, not ex call to the external component, but because of the, your own code, maybe third party DLL sitting there and causing you an issue. We group all those problems by the namespace. And the namespace is something really familiar to the dev team, so they can tell, okay, this is that part of the application or the other part of the application. So we group all those issues by the namespace. And what you can do, you can actually run a kind of more detailed report. And you know what? Let me even show you that since we have, uh, we have a little bit of time. Let me even show you how that works uh, in the actual browser. So uh, let me change the scale to this one. Uh, I'm going to the favorites. This is the UI for to running the reports. I'm going to the favorites because I already pre-configured this report to show you. Uh, so uh, here is my problems distribution analysis report. Uh, and uh, like what you can do, you can always continue drilling into that. So we don't want just to show you a nice picture which you can print and put on the table to your manager to show, yeah, this is our monitoring. This is for the state of the application. You want to have it actionable. You want to, to assign issues to somebody. You want to make something else. Uh, and uh, for that, uh, like let's go back to this jungle info retrieval application. You can keep drilling further. You can run uh, to see all those problems assigned to database, or you can launch the sub-report like application performance or application failure analysis. And that will go to the application level and it will enable you this application state for the time frame you selected, like for a week or for a year, for the quarter. So when we're looking at the application, what you want to know is basically what functionality is affected and uh, what, what, what is causing you an issue. If that's a web application, functionality is typically a, like a web page, a URL, or the web service method, something like that. So that's a web application. I can see that number one application, number one failure is happening in this page. So I can see the URL. Uh, let me do this. I can see the URL categories page. I can see that uh, it had 74% of the issues inside that. Those are some connectivity, some failures. So you know if you need to fix that or not. Maybe nobody's using that page. That's why it's failing in this case. Uh, or the other way you can do, uh, you can, and you of course can drill into all problems associated with the page. Or you can look uh, at this report to see the breakdown by the resources. Let's say you have a DLL which fails. And this DLL is accessed by every page equally. So every, every page fails because it goes to the same shared DLL. But this is a failure in the same place. Grouping failures by the resources you will see that uh, there is a certain namespace failing and you will tackle down to your DLL and you will see that 
there is, there is an issue over there. So you will see that it will be highlighted. You will be able to go to the problems associated with that and fix that. And that's, uh, that's pretty much everything I wanted to, to show you how it works. So what I wanted to summarize on top of that, that it's really easy to start monitoring and you don't need to know the application details. You don't need to know like how, it's, how does it work, what kind of DLLs you have deployed, what, what are the components it talks to. So you can just find out, set up your SLAs, even maybe start with the default SLAs and start lear learning about your application uh, the, during, during monitoring and if you have any issues, forward that to development. Maybe developers will come back to you and ask to enable uh, something like, can we monitor that? Or can we set up a different SLA, like less aggressive? Five seconds is too much. We need 15 seconds. <laughs> this is by design, five seconds is by design. Like, <laughs> I need to worry about only 15 seconds. So that, that's about that. Well, thank you. And I wanted to, to ask Gordon McKenna to tell you a little bit of his experience. And he's, for me, he's not only the MVP, uh, he was a partner of, of Avicode and was using our solution with his customers. So, yeah, Gordon, please. Hi, everyone. Uh, well, I'd just like to thank uh, Alex and uh, David for inviting me up today uh, and the nice introduction at the beginning. So that's uh, bunk cakes all around for me later. <laughs> Um, so, as Alex already mentioned, I'm a System Center Operations Manager MVP, and I run one of the leading System Center consultancies in Europe, a company called Inframon, and we just specialize in providing System Center solutions for customers uh, across EMEA. And as Alex already mentioned, we've been an Avicode partner for about five years now, so we've got some good, deep experience of putting Avicode in prior to the Microsoft acquisition. And I wanted to really kind of talk about some of my experiences today and, and give you an idea of kind of what this means to me as a part, uh, partner of the Avicode acquisition. So I spent a lot of time as a consultant going into companies and helping them build operations manager around their line of business applications. And one of the first things that I always do is I go in and I speak to the developers in the organization. And I'll walk through the developers and I'll always ask them the same question, when you're developing your applications, do you really think about monitoring in your application lifecycle? And, you know, they answer me, well, you know, monitoring, that's that kind of thing that my boss tells me that I'm supposed to do. But, you know, I never get time to kind of fit that in. And that's a, that's a real common experience. Monitoring is kind of a, an afterthought quite a lot of the time when people are developing applications. And it's a difficult job trying to drive that mentality. Because quite often in organizations, I meet developers and operations guy, guys that are really at loggerheads a lot of the time. When applications fail or they perform badly, the developers are like, the code's perfect, you know, it's your servers, you've not got the right database under it. And of course the infrastructure guys are like, no, it's your shoddy code that's causing the application. So quite often these guys not only don't get on, but they never sit down together in the same room. So Avicode's a, a great solution for me. For the first time in some organizations, I've actually had developers and operations guys sat around the same table looking at the same pane of glass. And it's a difficult thing. So one of the great points about Avicode really is it gives me a way of being able to retrofit instrumentation into existing .NET applications to give me that view and to bridge that gap between operations and development. So I wanted to talk quickly about a couple of uh, customer scenarios. So I, I have one uh, customer who's a, a telecoms provider that, that's based uh, across Europe. And they have a, a SharePoint installation that they've got in their environment. And they have a lot of uh, third-party developers that are developing .NET applications for this SharePoint farm. And these are then delivered to end users and customers in that organization. Now, one of the problems that they had, again, the applications got onboarded into the environment. And then the operations team had to struggle trying to find out why these applications were performing slowly or why there was errors on the application. So what we did is we set Avicode up as a, as a QA test environment. So before we onboarded applications into our SharePoint installation, we ran them through this QA test environment and Avicode examined the code and examined the performance and examined whether the infrastructure was up to the job of, of running these applications. And we were very easily able to pinpoint problems and fix them before we rolled them onto the production environment. And it proved a very valuable asset in the organization. 
I have another customer who provides streaming applications for their end users. And uh, what, again, one of the issues with this was they had many developers within the organization that were, were developing .NET web services and code for this streaming application. And they were finding at peak times the applications were running slow, users were complaining. And again, what Avicode allowed them to do was to be able to monitor the code during those peak times and really establish whether or not, again, the code wasn't very well optimized, or whether it was that the infrastructure wasn't up to the job at those peak times. And in that particular instance, it turned out that we needed to put more CPU and more memory under the infrastructure. And again, you know, we solved that problem about who was to blame for those applications. So those are, those are just a, a typical couple of scenarios that, um, that, that I've run into in the field. So, so as a partner, Avicode really gives me the ability, as I mentioned, to bridge that gap between operations and development and to give uh, a kind of view of, of difficult to manage .NET, .NET applications for that operations team. So again, we don't have that argument anymore before developers and IT pros. Okay. Thank you, Gordon. No problem. I appreciate it. I, I just, I couldn't believe that it was over because I thought Gordon's always got a lot of stories, so I was sorry for that pause. <laughs> so with that, I just wanted to kind of summarize what we talked about today and then what you saw. And really is this acquisition is all about Microsoft um, gaining technology to enable customers and partners um, to be able to get that 360 degree view of applications on uh, distributed environments. Because as we all know, we've got things um, running in data centers, we've got things moving to the cloud, and really this gives us the capability moving forward uh, to really not care where that is, but simply uh, get that 360 view of the application and make sure it's up and running. And there's, you know, the obvious results of that are lowering the costs and simplifying that management. As Gordon mentioned, I mean, one of the big uh, coups there is really being able to get um, IT and engineering together to quickly figure out what the issues are and to work together to fix them or know who to talk to when you see the issue come up. Um, optimizing availability, saving the revenue so you're not uh, losing revenue with all those uh, lost sales of Bunt Cakes through BuntCakes.com, and uh, building a unified management platform that brings us um, into the future with System Center. And with that, I think the best resource to go to now is the Microsoft Pathways site. So you can go to Microsoft.com Pathways slash Avocode, all the latest on the acquisition, the facts, is there's new information available. That's the first place we'll post it. And if you have uh, questions on this, any of the Avocode stuff going on, you can send your email to avocodeq at microsoft.com. And with that, I want to thank you for attending today and remind you, remember to fill out the evaluations. I know it's kind of late today, but if you can get to that, I guess, at some point in the next uh, 24 hours, that would be great. And thank you so much for joining us. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm.